Um, hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how to perform LED simulations in cross light. So uh, in this session, we are going to talk about how to perform 1D LED simulation and 2D LED simulation. And last, uh, we are going to talk about how to use cross light view to analyze your simulation results. Yes. So, so this is just some use, useful reminders and information. So first, you need, need to save your project under C drive so that you can run this uh, in cross light. And if you want to store your uh, simulation result, your codes, you need to copy it back to your personal EWS drive, for example, your desktop. So your desktop is a shared folder so that whenever you want to use different um, PC in EH4, uh, 406B8, uh, classroom, computers classroom, uh, you can have your uh, project. Yeah, and the second reminder is that what is layer mesh? So layer mesh means that how many vertical points you are sampling along uh, the layer direction, which is Y axis. And color mesh is the like the number of sampling points in the horizontal direction. For example, uh, in X axis. So in this example, if I have like a block like this, if I set my layer mesh to two, that means I have two points in the Y direction. If I set my column mesh to three, that means I have three points in the X direction. And what is layer mesh ratio? So here I provide some of the example uh, how it was defined. So if your mesh ratio is greater than one, for example, like 1.1, 1 .1, your, uh, your, the number of meshes becomes denser as it goes. And, uh, and the opposite, when your mesh ratio is smaller than one. If, you, if your mesh ratio is minus 0 0.9, that means you're, you have much denser uh, uh, grid distribution in the center and much sparser at the edge. And uh, similarly, if your mesh ratio is smaller than minus one, that means uh, it's much denser in the edges, but um, it's sparser at the center. And in this simulation, we are going to use layer file, uh, solution file, and the plot file. So previously we used the game file uh, to preview the optical gain spectrum and those information, but in this LED simulation, we are going to use solution file because uh, it's the, actually the main input for you to define uh, the control or controlling bias and other um, iteration conditions. Yeah, um, and plot file is some is a file for you to plot data uh, and analyze your result. Yeah, and layer file is that we use the used to define your device structure. So here we are going to talk about 1D LED simulation. Uh, it's emitting in near infrared uh, spectrum. We're using uh, aluminum gallium arsenide as a material. Uh, uh, so first uh, you open your uh, cross light under C drive program files, uh, cross light software, APSIS 2021. Epsis, simu epsis.exe. Yeah. Uh, once you open this file, you need to create a new project um, and no spaces allowed in the project name. Do not store on the, your desktop. You have to store it under C drive, local C drive or D drive. There are many students having issue uh, doing um, the compilation of their code because they store their project on the desktop. So you don't store your project on the desktop. Yeah, and your project folder should be copied onto the desktop after the class so that you can access to your project on different computer. But whenever you want to compile your code, you need to move it back to local C drive or D drive and open it, your project in cross light in C drive and D drive. Yeah, and here uh, we are going to add a layer, so file, and the plot files. And now we are going to create 
the first layer. So now we are simulating a PIN structure, or you can call it NIP structure, because we are creating the first N-type aluminum gallium arsenide with six points, a 0 0.6 aluminum mole fraction. And this would be my uh, N layer. Yeah, so because we are going to specify its N doping of 10 to the 22 uh, per meter cube. So, uh, so this would be equivalent to a 10 to the 17 uh, centimeter cube per centimeter cube. Yeah, and we are using some kind of Gaussian tail uh, in your doping profile. Yeah, not, not like a step function. Okay, so our first layer is N-type alumina gallium arsenide. Second, uh, oh yes, and then we need to provide some mesh information for layer mesh, for column mesh as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Next, we are creating uh, the intrinsic layer, but here we are using, uh, because this is LED structure, we want to have a quantum well to capture electron and hole for radiative recombination. So we need to create a new layer on top of the N-type aluminum gallium arsenide layer. Uh, now we have five nanometer thick quantum well, and the material for it is Indian gallium arsenide with 0 0.09 uh, Indian mole fraction. And this is an intrinsic layer, no doping. So it's a, an IP structure. We specify uh, the color mesh and the layer mesh information. We assume mesh ratio of one, meaning that we are assuming a uniform uh, uniform mesh in the quantum well region. <clears throat> and then finally, we copy our uh, first, first N layer on top of the quantum well, making it a P-type aluminum gallium arsenide with the same aluminum mole fraction. But here, uh, we change the doping type to P-type, uh, same doping concentration and the Gaussian tail, uh, similar uh, color mesh and the layer mesh structure. And then finally, we specify our contacts. So in the contact uh, column, uh, contact tag, you can see that uh, in the bottom, it is N contact and on the top should be the P contact. And, and now we assume only contact. So we can leave our barrier and the work function are uh, empty here. So if you want to study like a shocky contact in your final project, you need to work a little bit more about what this uh, barrier, shocky barrier and the work function uh, in these two columns. Yeah, but here we assume only contact. So you don't need to um, provide any value for barrier and the work function. <clears throat> and, and then once you click okay, now you have your own contact. And this is the file uh, that will, that is automatically generated. Uh, our <clears throat> first layer is N-type aluminum gallium arsenide. Our intrinsic layer is Indian gallium arsenide. And our P-type layer is aluminum gallium arsenide. And then my uh, top contact is P-contact and my bottom contact is N-contact, okay? Because we are building this structure from N, I to P. So that means our bottom contact is uh, N contact. Yeah, I keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, uh, so once we have our uh, layer file, we need to editing, we need to edit uh, this solution file. So uh, similar to uh, previ previous few weeks uh, in the first project, we need to load our mesh. So here, because my project name is simple, uh, dash LED, and uh, if you have your own project name, you need to modify this to your own project name. And uh, here, uh, I, because my project name is simple LED, so I first load my mesh information. So this should be like the project name dot msh. Uh, I specify my output file name, and my output file should be simple dash. Um, LED dot out, and I include the doping information, simple LED dot doping, and including the material information, simple dash LED dot matter. 
Okay, so these four lines are very important in the beginning of your solution file. Next, uh, <clears throat> we need to provide some initial guess of initial uh, wavelength. Uh, so we need to initialize our wave wavelength range from 700 nanometer to 1000 nanome nanometer. <clears throat> so this is in the near infrared uh, region. And because um, the band gap of Indian gallium arsenide can emit the photon around 830 nanometers. So we initialize our wavelength range uh, at around 0 0.83 uh, micrometer. So this is equivalent to 830, um, 830 uh, nanometer. Yeah. This is just the initialization of the wavelength. So if you your value is a little bit different from this one, it won't affect your um, final results. Yeah, so you can specify like 0 0.8 or 0 0.9, uh, as long as it's close to uh, what your actual emitting wavelength is. <clears throat> and here, print gain number, that means we are sampling 200 points within this wavelength range. That means uh, this wavelength range is ranging from 700 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. So within this range, I'm going to sample 200 uh, points and I'm going to solve, um, obtain the uh, spontaneous emission rate or spectrum information based on these 200 points, <clears throat> okay? And then I'm going to apply LED simple simulation file, um, method. So LED simple basically means that uh, you solve the surface diffusion model and you consider the spontaneous emission rate inside uh, the quantum well. And similarly, it has a variable here called the wavelength, which is the same as this initial wavelength. So you can use the same value that you specified earlier. And here, the second variable is efficiency. So this efficiency means extraction efficiency. So once you find, uh, finish your simulation, what you actually get is um, you can get external quantum efficiency. And this external quantum efficiency is equal to uh, internal quantum efficiency multiplied by extraction efficiency. So you can specify a constant extraction efficiency here. You can assume 100% extraction, uh, but but here uh, I, I use like 10% extraction, meaning that um, photon generated inside the quantum well, only 10% can get out of the LED and can be seen out from outside, okay? Uh, uh, there are other models allowing you to simulate a much accurate extraction efficiency like ray tracing, uh, you can study how to use ray tracing uh, in your final project. And this is highly recommended because based on my own uh, experience uh, in the past final project, no one studied how to use uh, ray tracing. So this, if you are interested in this part, you can discuss with either me or Professor Barron or other TAs uh, if you want to study like ray tracing, okay? And uh, then, I have Newton par. So this means that you are using like nonlinear Newton solver. So you just need to specify it. There is no like a variables for you to, um, to, to tune. And equilibrium, um, this line tells you that, uh, tells the program that uh, to solve the device under equilibrium condition, meaning that you're biased, there's no biased point. Uh, the bias is zero volt. You just solve the Poisson equation and not need to solve any continuity equation. Okay. Um, yeah. And then uh, you provide the voltage switch. You switch the, the end contact from zero volt, which is equilibrium, to minus 1.5 volt. This is called forward bias. Yeah, because we are providing mm, voltage on N contact, not to the P contact. If you are providing to P contact, then you need to specify voltage dash two value to 
okay? Uh, because we are providing voltage to N contact and we set our P contact to zero volt. So uh, in order to forward bias this LED device, we need to uh, provide negative bias, okay? A uh, print step means that, um, mm, so for every one volt, you output your X, Y result, structural data. Okay, so for each bias point, you are going to get one uh, structural data and IV characteristics and efficiency, those information. But uh, print step means that you are store, you are actually output and store those structural data. So for example, in the first structural data output, uh, what you are going to get is uh, the structural data under zero volts. And the second file, output file, you are going to get for structural data is one volt. So if you plot your uh, structural data at the first, uh, at the second output file, that would be your, um, uh, the structural data for under one volt bias, okay? Uh, initial step, uh, this is the just the initial uh, voltage step, maximum step, which is the 0 0.1 volt. You can decrease this maximum step so that your IV curve is much smoother, okay? Um, and then auto finish to current one, so it, it will, um, this, this voltage sweep uh, it's going to be terminated if your current and collected from N contact is greater than one milliamp. And this is one milliamp, okay? And auto within five times 10 to a minus four, meaning that um, <clears throat> if, if there is like a one milliamp plus minus five times 10 to a minus four amp, uh, that means uh, this voltage sweep is going to reach the convergence or it will stop, okay? <clears throat> and next, uh, where we are running voltage sweep, we are also running current sweep. So my current collecting from the end contact, if it's greater than five, then it will stop. Uh, this five means five amp, yeah. And you can output your, uh, structural data for every one amp, okay? And the initial step, maximum step, and the minimum step, okay? And you can keep it as it is, but if you want to have much smoother IV characteristics, then you need to decrease maximum step. And if your convergence does not, cannot be reached, sometimes uh, you need to decrease your minimum step, okay? <clears throat> because uh, the program will try to use maximum uh, currents step uh, to, to reach the, to finish this current sweep as fast as possible. But sometimes it cannot reach the convergence, then the program will automatically decrease the, the step uh, to make it, to make the iteration much stable, okay? Uh, yeah, and if you cannot reach a good convergence, then in your, particularly in your final project, then we will talk about, uh, this in detail, yeah. But right now for this, these uh, parameter sets, you can reach a good convergence. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have specified our uh, voltage switch, current switch in the solution file. Next is the plotting file. So uh, once you execute this plot file, we are going to get a PDF file and you can see uh, the final results. And this is one way to analyze your data. You can also use cross slide view to see your data. And, but I'm going to talk about that after I have, I, I finish the a 2D LED simulation later. Yeah, later in this video. Yeah, but right now I'm going to uh, guide you how to use plot file to generate the data you want. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, okay, so first the line plot data, plot device equals to PDF. This means that, uh, and this is more like a template. You, know, you tell the program to output your file in format of uh, PDF, okay? So my first plot, for every plot, you need to get your data. So my first plot is to plot band diagram. So uh, at a zero bias, which is under equilibrium conditions. 
And whenever you want to plot data, you need to get data first. And this, because Venn diagram is XY data or you call it structural data. So you need to like get data, main input, and uh, just input the solution file and the output of the solution file and XY data <clears throat> equals to one, one. Oh, so that, that means you are using uh, the first output, uh, structural output file. So the first one is, is the um, under, it's obtained under equilibrium, okay? And once you get this data, you can plot the data. So plot 1B, because I'm going to plot 1B uh, band diagram. The variable is band from 0 0.5, 0 0.6, meaning that you are plotting the band diagram uh, at the point, from the point uh, 0 0.5 micron, 0 0.6 micron in X, X and the Y to 0 0.5 micron, 1.9 micron. So this means that you are plotting the band diagram along Y axis. Yeah, and particularly at the center of the device, uh, the center of X axis, okay? And my second plot uh, is the ID curve. And uh, uh, so here you need to get data first. And similarly, you, in, you input your solution file, uh, you specify your output file, and then you scan data. It's not XY data now because we are not using uh, any structural data. So we scan data from one to five. So IV data is extracted from one to five bias points. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about what does that mean from one to five bias points. So each point, each bias point um, <clears throat> uh, has its own IV uh, data. I'm going to talk about that uh, later in probably in the next slide. <clears throat> so this means that you are scanning data from the first output file to the fifth output file and you plot scan your scan variable, which is your X axis, is your voltage in the N context. And variable uh, is your, uh, your Y axis is your current, okay? Uh, collecting in the N context. And why we need to provide scale horizontal, that means we are multiplying uh, our horizontal, which is X axis by minus one. Because as I said, uh, we are biasing our end contact from zero to minus 1.5 volts. And we need to flip the sign from zero volt to 1.5 volts. So we multiply it by a constant factor of minus one, okay? I'm going to generate uh, the third plot, which is uh, current density as a function of internal quantum efficiency. Okay, so similarly, uh, internal quantum efficiency is not structural data. So we are using scan data from um, the first bias point to eight bias point. And <clears throat> I plot scan by x axis is current density, uh, my, my current, and uh, my y axis is LED efficiency. So this is uh, the variable that you can check uh, in cross light manual. So this is associated with uh, an internal quantum efficiency. <clears throat> okay, uh, I have my fourth plot. Uh, so my fourth plot is to show the band diagram at the eight bias point. <clears throat> and similarly, we are plotting the band diagram uh, along the same, uh, same x, y, y range. <clears throat> and finally, we are going to plot the emission spectrum. Uh, so this code called gain spectrum variable total spontaneous rate. Yeah, so this is a fixed variable. So you just need to type in this line in PLT file and you will get a uh, plot emission spectrum. Okay. Okay, so uh, on the right-hand side, right bottom. So when we plot the band diagram, we are plot from uh, 0.5 micron, 0.6 micron, this data point from here to here, which is 0.5 micron to 
uh, my x-axis is 0 0.5 micron and my y-axis is 1.9 micron, okay? So uh, we are going to have five plots after we uh, perform the simulation correctly. Okay, so similarly, you double check all the files for accuracy. You generate uh, the geo file, you generate mesh file, and you run the simulation by right click the solution file and select simulate. And then you, once your uh, simulation reaches the convergence, you right click the plot file and select view result. Okay, the generated uh, PDF file is stored under the project folder with the file name of output.pdf. This file name might be di different uh, from the, the, the one showing here. Uh, it can be your like a project name and with the dash G, um, but you will see a generated PDF file under your project folder. Yeah, but please do check what is the file name. Yeah, double check with that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, when I say like from one data po bias point to eight bias point, it actually correlated with like a specific uh, voltage and the current. So you can check that information under that's your project name, that sol.msg file. So my first, <clears throat> my first um, bias point is always under equilibrium condition. So my voltage is zero, my current is zero. And because we specify the voltage sweep with print step of one volt. So my second step would be like uh, one volt and, and that, that voltage it's real. Um, can get you the current of uh, 0 0.3, 10 to the minus six amp per meter. <clears throat> if you want to convert this current to current density amp per meter square, then you need to divide this value by the width of your contact, okay? <clears throat> and yeah, so you can see uh, my third bias point, my fourth bias point until eight, bias point. So you can see that <clears throat> my voltage is about minus 2.146 volts. And my current, you can see here, is 5 amp per meter. But this is because my in my current sweep, in my current sweep, if you remember, we set our um, upper bound to 5, which is 5 amp per meter. So you can check it here, this one this value, so uh, it will stop at this value, okay? Okay, so this is my first result, as you remember, um, that this is the bank diagram under equilibrium condition. So you can see that my um, quasi-firmer level is like a flat line here. Uh, there's no discontinuity between the quasi-firmer level. <clears throat> And my second plot is the IV characteristic. So you can see that uh, the x-axis is my contact voltage. My y-axis is the contact current. Okay. And the third plot is my uh, internal quantum efficiency as a function of um, both uh, current, as a function of current. And uh, my fourth plot uh, is the band diagram. I remember is operated at the eighth bias point. Yeah, so you can see that you can kind of see the flat band conditions because this is under uh, high injection conditions. <clears throat> and the final plot <clears throat> is the spectrum uh, profile. As you remember, uh, in the initial wavelength case, we specify our wavelength range from seven nanometer to 1,000 nanometers. So we are sampling 200 um, points in my x-axis, and we calculate the total spontaneous emission rate on this axis. And this plot actually connected those data into this uh, final result, okay? <clears throat> so from this plot, you can see what is the peak emission wavelength. It's around, around like 0 0.85. It's a, a little bit deviated from what we specified about like 830 nanom nanometer. 
but it's okay because uh, this is just some initial points. But eventually, you will see that the peak emission wavelength is about 850 near infrared uh, emission. Okay. And, uh, and in the next part, I'm going to talk about how to create like two dimensional simulations. Um, this is just one of the optional um, simulation you can perform if you are interested in like a geometrical effect, uh, like a non-uniform current injection. And you can study, most of the students uh, study like two dimensional uh, simulation for their like LED tour solar cell. So I think this is very important for you to uh, learn how to create two dimensional simulations. <clears throat> so this is my uh, 2D LED structure. So uh, the, the bottom layer is n type aluminum gallium arsenide uh, and a multiple quantum well <clears throat> and a P type aluminum gallium arsenide. Okay. And this is my P contact. I have a large P contact and a small N contact. Yeah, uh, you can decrease your P contact thickness in reality uh, because you are, um, you can try to study <clears throat> uh, what, ha what would happen if you decrease your contact thickness, uh, contact width, P contact width. So here we assume that our P contacts cover the entire uh, P layer of aluminum gallium arsenide, okay? Um, similarly, we are using dot layer, uh, dot soul, and dot plot files, and we name our project to the LED. <clears throat> and because we are using a multiple quantum well structure, so uh, for convenience, we can save the barrier layer and the quantum well layer individually. So first I create my barrier layer, which is aluminum gallium arsenide with 0.6 aluminum mole fraction. My first column uh, is this one on the showing on the left hand side. And the right hand side in the barrier region or in the quantum well region, my second column is void. So I need to set my second column to be void. Yeah. And my barrier thickness is five nanometer. Uh, I provide five layer mesh um, in my barrier region. And then I store it separately. I name it as gallium arsenide.bar under the project folder. Second, I create my quantum well uh, file. So uh, in the quantum well file, I only provide three lines of code uh, I specify what is the material in the first column, and I provide uh, the mole fraction, Indian mole fraction to be 0 0.09. I provide, I, I tell the program that this is actually the quantum well. And second, I provide uh, the material for my second column. And because it's void, so I type void here. Uh, my quantum well thickness is five nanometer, similar to the barrier layer. Okay, and I provide a layer mesh uh, of five. Okay, and you can add the uh, BAR and the .qw file into your project so that you can directly edit the files in the cross light axis. See, see how it does. Okay, and first you edit your dot .layer file. Um, it's very similar to the 1D simulation except that you need, now you have two columns. So you need to, um, you need to specify the second column, the material for the second column as well. Yeah. Uh, so this is pre pretty intuitive. You specify the material for the first column, you specify the material for the second column uh, and similar for the rest of parts. <clears throat> yeah. uh, so, my second layer, uh, as you can see in this graph, my first layer, uh, they have the same material, uh, same doping for my first column and the second column. But in my second layer, you can see that on the left first on the left hand side in the first column, 
uh, it has the same uh, doping and the material information as the first column, but on the right hand side, you can see my second column has the highly doped N doping, like a high, um, much larger N doping concentration. So here you can see that in my second layer, uh, in my second column, you can see my doping concentration is increased by uh, four orders. Okay. Um, then uh, my third layer is similar, uh, which is aluminum gallium arsenide and type aluminum gallium arsenide. Uh, my second uh, column is void. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I provide a multiple quantum well, six periods. So I just include file gallium arsenide at quantum well, uh, include file gallium arsenide uh, barrier. Uh, I repeat it by six times so that I can include these six quantum wells into my LED structure. And uh, similar for like P-type aluminum gallium arsenide, uh, this is just very straightforward. And finally, we define two top contacts. So previously in the 1D simulation, we defined like a bottom contact and, and uh, top contact. Here, <clears throat> we provide two top contacts because it, it depends on the LED structure that we defined. And in this example, we have two top contacts and one is for N contact, the other is for P contact. So my first top contact is in the first column uh, ranging from zero to four micrometer. Okay, uh, because my first column has a width of uh, for micrometer, <clears throat> it's only contact. I provide a second contact uh, from uh, in in the second column uh, from zero point two five micrometer to one micrometer. Uh, so he, this from and two actually starts from this reference point, the beginning of that specific uh, column. So 0 0.5 micrometer is starting from here. So, so 0 0.5 micrometer is this point and to one micrometer, okay? Because my second column has a, has a width of one micrometer, yeah. And this would be my final structure, but you can visualize it in layer builder, yeah, to double check the correctness, okay? Uh, uh, so it can be much faster and easier to edit the dot layer file manually once you have made a, a few devices by yourself then once you are familiar with those codes and the logics behind it you don't have to use layer builder GUI to to build your device yep <clears throat> mm. I use the include statement to make repeating structures easier. Uh, that's how we did in uh, gallium arsenide barrier and the gallium arsenide quantum well. Uh, when you have multiple uh, columns, if that layer in that column is not defined, you need to provide a void macro for that region. Okay, that is uh, the very important aspect in 2D simulation. We don't have this issue in 1D simulation. Uh, uh, you need to edit the solution file and the first the four lines are very similar. Uh, we output our quantum states, okay. Uh, here uh, we use like an independent multiple quantum well model Q transform multi quantum well bundle uh, to, to perform the multiple quantum well simulation. Uh, previously, in the 1D case, we only have one quantum well, but now we have multiple quantum wells. So you need to provide these two lines uh, to study like a uh, well to well interaction and the transport uh, in the multiple quantum well region. So these two are very important. <clears throat> and you can explicitly specify uh, the order coefficient for EN, which is EEH, 
order recombination coefficient, and order P is uh, HHE order recombination coefficient, and the, for the second material. So uh, you can check uh, uh, that material file to see what does this correlated to. Uh, so here, uh, this matter equals to two is actually uh, the material, uh, the quantum well material, which is an Indian gallium arsenide. So we explicitly given uh, an order coefficient to the quantum well uh, material. Okay, and then similar for the radiative recombination coefficient, we can call it like B coefficient. We can provide these two, three, two numbers or three numbers to the quantum well material. <clears throat> And uh, Newton solver. And so this is very similar to the first um, to the first one uh, D simulation. Uh, in the one D simulation, we did not provide any like tolerance or or any variables. But if we in two D simulation, sometimes you cannot reach a good convergence. Then you need to fine tune like a damping step or maximum iteration. Or the tolerance to improve the convergence. Yeah, if you are interested, uh, or you cannot reach a good convergence, then you probably you need to play with these uh, Newton iteration parameters uh, to improve the convergence stability. <clears throat> and similarly, uh, we initialize our wavelength range. Uh, I explained this in the one D simulation before. Uh, similar for LED simple uh, equilibrium, uh, we provide voltage sweep and the current sweep to five um, amp per meter. So you can see this value uh, is to minus five because uh, this this current one and the voltage one is corresponded to uh, p contact in one D simulation. Uh, voltage one, voltage one, and the current one is, is, is related to uh, the N contact. But here in this case, it's actually related to P contact because we are defining our <clears throat> our top first the top contact to be P contact. Okay, so uh, you can see my voltage is positive, but my current is negative. Okay. Uh, similar for plot file, <clears throat> we plot the band, we plot the IV curve, and also the um, current as a function of internal quantum efficiency. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we plot on uh, the band structure uh, for different bias points. You can see this XY data of three, meaning that uh, I'm plotting the band diagram, electron concentration uh, under this particular bias condition. And you can check what is its uh, voltage and the current under the sol.msg file. <clears throat> yeah, there are a lot of variables you can, you can check. Uh, it has like band, recombination, uh, radiative recombination rate, order recombination rate. Yeah, you can plot it like as a function of position. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, you can also plot like 2D uh, data, like a total current, total current as a function of position. Yeah, you will see, see the result afterwards. <clears throat> um, Mm, I, I will show the uh, the results after these codes. Uh, but before that, uh, one thing very important in your final project is that uh, for every time you need to like generate a layer file, you need to generate a geo geometry file and also the mesh file and then execute the solution file. And these things, you can do it automatically uh, by creating a batch file. Okay, and you can create this batch file and enter the following. So uh, first thing you need to specify the 
uh, the folder, your cross slide folder. And then you just copy paste these three, three lines of codes into it. And then you replace this 2D LED with your uh, project name. Then once you click this batch file, it will help you automatically uh, compile this layer file and compile this geometry file and generating like scoping file, material file, it will auto help automatically help you to um, execute this solution file once everything is set, okay? <clears throat> so if you want to like change one variable and, and you want to run it like a, in the background mode and you, you want to do something else, then <clears throat> you need to use this technique to batch process your simulation. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah. Uh, okay. I think I have covered a lot of information in this presentation. Um, and finally, I'm going to talk just a little bit about uh, what does this X Y data mean. Um, so previously, I explained that. It, if you plot the x, y data equals to one, one, that means you are plotting the structural or position, positional data of the file ranging from uh, your output file 0001 to 0001. And, and this 0001 uh, is the result under uh, equilibrium condition. So your bias point is zero. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I have covered uh, this information as well. You plot the band diagram from two one to two two. That means you're, you're plotting the band diagram in 1D from coordinates X equals two, Y equals to one to X equals to two, Y equals to two. And uh, you can visualize uh, this uh, on the left hand side of this figure, and the resulting band diagram uh, is showing on the right hand side. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, XY data focuses on one snapshot, like a carrier distribution at like zero volts, or uh, band diagram at zero volt. Scan data collects the uh, scalar data. Uh, by varying this voltage. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, uh, um, yes, I think um, I, bas I have basically covered this in the previous um, explanation. Uh, and then finally, it's how to use cross light view. So, uh, one way to see those those results is by uh, implementing this PLT file, but actually you don't have to use PLT file to analyze your data. <clears throat> Here, you can use cross slide view. For example, you can double click on this output file. This is the, the output file of the first bias point. You can double click it and you can open this cross slide view. For example, if you want to plot the band diagram, you click this band. Uh, there, there's a button called band. You click it and you drag it uh, in Y axis, then you will, you will see the band diagram. Yeah, this is very straightforward and really easy to use. I would suggest you to use this function um, um, at your own convenience. Uh, my personal suggestion is that I, when I did my final presentation, my final project, I used uh, cross slide view to plot to visualize my data more than uh, that PLT file. <laughs> if you want to plot the IV curve, you click on the scan bias and then you select a uh, vertical axis to current, you select uh, X axis to voltage, then you are plotting uh, voltage current uh, data. Yep, and here ordinate y axis mean that uh, use uncontact uh, index equals two to get the positive current. Yeah, 
you can, you can play with this number, you will see the result. And yeah, and once you specify this, then you can see the ID characteristics uh, in cross light view. Okay. And you can select different Y axis. For example, you can select like LED efficiency, then you can visualize the internal quantum efficiency as a function of voltage. If you select current, then you can see the uh, internal quantum efficiency as a function of current. Yeah. And if you have any questions related to how to use cross light view, then you can come to office hour and, and I can show you how to use this correctly. I think that's it. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, in cross uh, computer lab office hours. Thank you very much.